convincing evidence that a large celestial body is orbiting somewhere in the outskirts of our own solar system. Either you support the hypothesis of a rogue planet, or you remain skeptical. Regardless of your belief on this topic, scientists are confident that a Planet X, or a Planet 9 as it is called by some, is out there. But since they haven't yet been able to locate its position, they are asking the public for assistance in locating the giant planet. Scientists at the Australian National University are publicly releasing images taken by the SkyMapper telescope at the university's Siding Spring Observatory in regional New South Wales. They are doing this in the hopes that Planet 9 makes an appearance. The telescope has been doing a digital map of the southern skies, producing hundreds of thousands of images. Therefore, they have invited the public, everyone, to access the images and try and find this planet. The project is similar to a public search launched by NASA called Backyard Worlds, which I spoke of extensively in a published video dated February 22nd of this year. The hypothesized Planet 9 remains mysterious, but scientists concluded that the planet existed after an analysis of Pluto's orbit, which may have been impacted by the gravity of another planet. Australian astrophysicist Dr. Brad Tucker emphasized that a calculation conducted one year ago indicated that in order to explain Pluto's orbit, you would have to place a supersized planet in this rough position, a theory that makes perfect sense. Neptune was actually predicted the exact same way, so there are historical reasons to believe that this theory is correct. For their part, intrigued stargazers haven't been looking up at the sky to find the planet. Rather, they're turning to their computers. A few days ago, the Zooniverse website posted photos of the southern sky. Since then, more than 30,000 volunteers have been studying those photos thoroughly, trying to spot the enigmatic Planet 9. They are calling it Spot the Difference, which includes observing an object moving through space over time. If you see something, you indicate the observation. Then the website calculates whether the object is on a good orbit. It then sends the information to the Australian astronomers, who will then follow the object with their telescope at the Siding Spring Observatory. They hope to complete the high uh, probability data set within the next several months. So something is definitely going on in our solar system that now includes astronomers from both NASA and the Australian National University, located in the Southern Hemisphere, where the Planet X system is believed to be approaching. I indicated in my last video, dated March 23rd, that I firmly believe that the newly discovered TRAPPIST-1 solar system and the Nemesis star system have coincidental similarities. In other words, they are probably one and the same system, with one notable contradiction. The system is not 39 light years from Earth, as NASA claims, but rather much closer, as recent evidence would indicate. There will certainly be a difference of opinion on whether NASA is being honest with the public on this subject. But even the most sophisticated debunkers cannot refute the evidence that suggests the presence of a large celestial body in space. It is, after all, NASA who is taking credit for the discovery of TRAPPIST-1, which they claim consists of seven planets. It is therefore conceivable that this mini solar system that they claim exists could be harboring the mysterious planet known as Nibiru Planet X. If our objective is only to discredit the research and discovery for whatever reasons, then we are only cheating ourselves in our quest to seek the truth. So there must be some common denominator that brings all factions together in an effort to locate and discover what scientists now believe exists in our solar system. The idea that TRAPPIST-1 could actually be the Nemesis system is just one theory, but it makes sense if you compare the similarities that describe these systems. But there's also another theory that makes absolute sense. Is Planet 9 really Planet X? There is overwhelming evidence to support this theory. Here then, once again, are the similarities. 
On December 30th, 1983, the Washington Post published an incredible story that indicated that a mysterious heavenly body had been found in the direction of the constellation Orion. Then 33 years later, on December 30th, 2016, NASA claims that at Aphelion, Planet 9 would be in the general location of the Orion and Taurus constellations. Do you notice the similarity in these two statements? I recently received a message from a subscriber who began by saying, all of today's news headlines are just a distraction from the real problem, Planet X. So in reality, there are numerous stories and videos that have emerged that suggest that Planet X is lurking out there, has been rebranded as Planet 9, which confirms uh, some very old news stories about its discovery. With Planet X, or Nibiru, still called conspiracy theory or fake news by the mainstream media, we're now asking ourselves if the biggest cover-up of all time is about to come crashing down, while reminding you of the two 1983 stories published by both the Washington Post and the New York Times. So the search for Planet X continues rebranded by this BBC news story as the search for Planet Nine. The New York Times, as indicated, had published in early 1983 a story called Clues Get Warm in the Search for Planet X, in which they reported something out there beyond the farthest reaches of the known solar system seems to be tugging at Uranus and Neptune. Some gravitational force keeps perturbing the two giant planets, causing irregularities in their orbits. The force suggests a presence far away and unseen, a large object that may be the long-sought Planet X. Reporting at that time upon the launching of the infrared astronomical satellite that would conduct a wide-ranging survey of nearly all of the sky over the following six to eight months, detecting sources of not only ordinary light, but of infrared radiation invisible to the human eye and absorbed by the atmosphere. Scientists hoped they'd be able to chart thousands of previously undetected objects in the sky, with a dim hope of finding Planet X. Eleven months later, on December 30th of 1983, the Washington Post published a story called Possibly as Large as Jupiter, within which they reported in their first paragraph, a heavenly body possibly as large as the giant planet Jupiter and possibly so close to Earth that it would be part of this solar system, has been found in the direction of the constellation Orion by an orbiting telescope aboard the U.S. Infrared Astronomical Satellite. The same U.S. Infrared Astronomical Satellite that the New York Times story had mentioned would be searching for Planet X had found a heavenly body scientists described then as so mysterious is the object that astronomers do not know if it is a planet, a giant comet, a nearby protostar that never got hot enough to become a star, a distant galaxy so young that it is still in the process of forming its first stars, or a galaxy so shrouded in dust that none of the light cast by its stars ever gets through. Talk of Planet X soon vanished from the mainstream media, and for many years until this day, those who spoke of Nibiru or Planet X were ridiculed, called tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists, and much worse, by those who are unable to grasp the existence of another celestial body in our solar system that just may be biblical in respect to our future. So again I must say, do you see the connection between these two mainstream media reports and the recently announced discovery of new planets and a new solar system. 2016 brought us the hypothetical quote, Planet Nine, a massive not yet discovered celestial body that the mainstream media reluctantly reported after Caltech scientists stated that a massive outer planet is the likeliest explanation for the similarities in orbits of six different objects. Dubbed Planet Nine, after the death of Pluto, 
Scientists explained how Planet Nine could be responsible for many of the mysteries our solar system still poses. In yet another coincidental similarity, Space.com published a story on October 19th of 2016 called uh, Did the Mysterious Planet Nine Tilt the Solar System? That very same day, Astronomy.com published an article entitled Planet Nine May Be Responsible for Tilting the Sun. Four days later, on October 23rd, Forbes ran a story called Mysterious Planet Nine May Be Pulling Our Solar System Out of Whack. Were all of these publications by mainstream media sources just fake news stories? I mentioned that NASA had indicated in December of last year that Planet Nine, if it exists, which scientists now believe is probable, would be located in the constellation Orion. So in another coincidental similarity, Planet Nine is located in the same general area that the Washington Post reported the mysterious heavenly body was way back in 1983. What the New York Times actually called Planet X before everything went silent on this subject. So once again, you must ask yourself, is Planet Nine the same massive body as Planet X? If it has a 10 to 20,000 year orbit, as they claim, it would be in the same vicinity of the sky today as it was back in 1983. So here is an interesting twist in this continuing story. Scientists have invited both amateur and professional public astronomers to scan the skies for the elusive planet Nine. Pluto may not be a planet anymore, and you may not agree with that, but we now have the chance to understand why a new potential ninth planet. But to do so, we're going to need your help. We've been using SkyMapper, a robotic telescope at the Australian National University Siding Spring Observatory, to produce the first digital map of the entire southern sky. We've taken literally hundreds of thousands of images of the southern sky, and hiding in amongst these images we think might possibly be Planet Nine. But we need your help to search for these images in order to find it. Together, we may finally end the debate about Pluto being a planet and discover the first planet in our own solar system in more than 150 years. But why call it Planet Nine rather than its real name, Nibiru or Planet X? Here is one possible and meaningful explanation. If you were to call it by its real name, the unaware masses would have a much different perspective of the biblical planet than if they were merely searching for information on Planet Nine. Does this make any sense? You bet it does, and for very good reasons for those who control the masses. Our list of coincidental similarities is now on a roll. If the orbit of Planet Nine is believed to take 10 to 20,000 years to complete, what then happened to Earth the last time this monster came our way some 10,000 years ago? If we were to go back to the floods of Noah, then what would a planet that scientists claim may be responsible for tilting our sun and the solar system be able to do to the axial tilt of planet Earth should it come for a return pass? Daniel Whitmire of the University of Arkansas indicated that Planet Nine could be responsible for a series of mass extinctions that already occurred in our history by casting Kuiper Belt objects into the inner solar system. These would be the same objects that the Washington Post referred to as perturbing in their 1983 story. As it turns out, the Caltech astronomers responsible for this discovery quite appropriately referred to this planet as the perturber. Here is something that will help explain what is happening in our solar system that has great implications for the citizens of planet Earth. A mysterious phenomenon that has been happening that involves the solar winds becoming so dense that even NASA can no longer censor them. These are extreme abnormalities of the magnetosphere and significant radiation from the Sun. The YouTube contributor who has been monitoring this has indicated that this does not appear to be a glitch as it steadily returned to a normal flow rather than going blank or suddenly changing shots as often happens when there is a glitch in the equipment. 
So let's examine this as he displays both normal and abnormal monitoring of the magnetosphere on this particular date, March 14th.
the bewildering race to discover Planet Nine provides credible evidence that NASA scientists are aware of something that all of us do not know. And what they know falls directly in line with that recent wave of energy that struck the Earth. Some of you may know or heard of Bob Fletcher. He has covered various aspects of the elite's preparations for a huge event, including the movement of large amounts of long-term survival food to secretive underground facilities. He has also reported why the 1% that are the elite have been preparing for a biblical event for many years. Here is one thing that many of you may not know. In 2016 alone, the interest in underground bunkers had risen by a whopping 700%. Overall sales of these bunkers grew by 300% since the November presidential election. Yes, the elite are gearing up for the apocalypse. There is many real anxieties that include nuclear warfare, a disease pandemic, natural catastrophes, and even the alleged coming of Planet X Nibiru. They are being built everywhere. In Poland, concrete security bunkers called the Safe House are being constructed. In Kansas, 161 protective domes called survival condos have been built. In South Dakota, a survival community is being planned to accommodate 5,000 people. In Germany, bunkers are being built that are said to be apocalyptic proof. In Texas, the sale of high-end underground shelters has risen dramatically in the past few months. Here is an example of how the elite are planning on riding out the storm that is coming. You may find this to be quite disturbing. Everything's up and quiet all afternoon. Uh, conditions are green inside the silo, and uh, we're good to go. Perfect. Thank you. All right, see you later. Thank you. So it's evident in all that we see and read about that something ominous is on the horizon, is happening whether we wish it to happen or hope that it will just all go away. NASA and the media have all but admitted that it is coming. So has the whole world gone crazy on this subject? Well, according to Harvard psychiatrist Patricia Wallace, Nibiru is an addiction, a true disease that has inflicted millions of people who fantasize about a distant celestial object. Dr. Wallace believes these patients suffer from a debilitating condition, a diagnosable ailment that she calls Nibiru addiction. The disease, she said, manifests in three stages. The first stage is called Nibiru Awareness. This typically occurs when a susceptible person is exposed to the word Nibiru or Planet X, often through word of mouth or read on internet conspiracy forums. During this stage, the individual is still a fully functional member of society, but in the back of his mind, uh, he is constantly thinking about Planet X and how it will destroy the Earth. He doesn't speak of this openly or publicly, but may communicate anonymously uh, with other believers. Over time, Nibiru awareness may escalate to the second stage called Nibiru addiction, 
a deeper pathology uh, that seizes the patient's psyche with overwhelming thoughts and visions of Nibiru. They may spend hours upon hours prowling internet forums, believing they are conducting Nibiru research to the betterment of humanity. They present compelling arguments with absolutely no evidence. In rare cases, Nibiru addiction escalates to what is called a Nibiru psychosis, by which point the patient has lost touch with reality. They perceive themselves as Nibiru messiahs, part of a savior movement dedicated to uh, warning the world about an impending Nibiru apocalypse that will eradicate all life on Earth. Dr. Wallace has even petitioned the Centers for Disease Control to recognize Nibiru addiction as a potentially pandemic disease. Now, she said she had to quit treating Nibiru patients because, in her own words, she was beginning to have personal visions of Nibiru. Imagine that, a professional psychiatrist who is treating patients with the so-called Nibiru disease was actually herself beginning to believe it was true. So here is an example of an educated person attempting to make a valid argument about a subject that has been controversial and highly ridiculed since the inception of the Washington Post article way back in 1983, claiming that the planet has been discovered by an infrared telescope. But as you can see here, her conclusions are very questionable. First of all, she fails to account for scientific evidence that proves Nibiru's reality. Photographs taken from the Hubble and the South Pole telescopes, testimony from authenticated whistleblowers, and notable scientists that have mysteriously disappeared. So if you were to take this person's medical evaluation with any sense of credibility, you would have to conclude that she is probably out to make some sort of a name for herself rather to, than to establish any basis for the existence of a heavenly body in our solar system. But there is one thing that is certain in all of this commotion about what's real and what's not. The debate over Nibiru's existence has persisted for over 30 years and shows no signs of ending anytime soon, regardless of what anyone may say. The truth is out there, and it will be found sooner or later. Be sure to follow the latest updates on Planet X on our Facebook page, and visit our media website for the latest alternative non-mainstream news stories. In the meantime, stay safe and keep looking to the sky. There are a few secrets when it comes to evaluating the mounting evidence that a large celestial body is orbiting somewhere in the outskirts of our own solar system. Either you support the hypothesis of a rogue planet or you remain skeptical. Regardless of your belief on this topic, scientists are confident that a Planet X or a Planet 9, as it is called by some, is out there. But since they haven't yet been able to locate its position, they are asking the public for assistance in locating the giant planet. Scientists at the Australian National University are publicly releasing images taken by the SkyMapper telescope at the university's Siding Spring Observatory in regional New South Wales. They are doing this in the hopes that Planet 9 makes an appearance. The telescope has been doing a digital map of the southern skies, producing hundreds of thousands of images. Therefore, they have invited the public, everyone, to access the images and try and find this planet. The project is similar to a public search launched by NASA called Backyard Worlds, which I spoke of extensively in a published video dated February 22nd of this year. The hypothesized Planet 9 remains mysterious, but scientists concluded that the planet existed after an analysis of Pluto's orbit which may have been impacted by the gravity of another planet. 
Australian astrophysicist Dr. Brad Tucker emphasized that a calculation conducted one year ago indicated that in order to explain Pluto's orbit, you would have to place a supersized planet in this rough position, a theory that makes perfect sense. Neptune was actually predicted the exact same way. So there are historical reasons to believe that this theory is correct. For their part, intrigued stargazers haven't been looking up at the sky to find the planet. Rather, they're turning to their computers. A few days ago, the Zooniverse website posted photos of the southern sky. Since then, more than 30,000 volunteers have been studying those photos thoroughly, trying to spot the enigmatic Planet 9. They are calling it Spot the Difference, which includes observing an object moving through space over time. If you see something, you indicate the observation. Then the website calculates whether the object is on a good orbit. It then sends the information to the Australian astronomers who will then follow the object with their telescope at the Siding Spring Observatory. They hope to complete the high uh, probability data set within the next several months. So something is definitely going on in our solar system that now includes astronomers from both NASA and the Australian National University located in the Southern Hemisphere where the Planet X system is believed to be approaching. I indicated in my last video dated March 23rd that I firmly believe that the newly discovered TRAPPIST-1 solar system and the Nemesis star system have coincidental similarities. In other words, they are probably one and the same system, with one notable contradiction. The system is not 39 light years from Earth, as NASA claims, but rather much closer, as recent evidence would indicate. There will certainly be a difference of opinion on whether NASA is being honest with the public on this subject. But even the most sophisticated debunkers cannot refute the evidence that suggests the presence of a large celestial body in space. It is, after all, NASA who is taking credit for the discovery of TRAPPIST-1, which they claim consists of seven planets. It is therefore conceivable that this mini